recorded in front of a live studio audience in Los Angeles, California. Dude, check this out, man. Look at this. Whoa. Dude, check what I got. What? Man, we're wrestling guys. And at the Wrestling Guys store, you can be too. The Wrestling Guys store located at 6085 State Street, Huntington Park, California. It's five miles west of the Commerce Casino. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is part two of Circle of Debate podcast here, episode 54. It's obviously you saw Money Mike rocking out. Well, of course, the man himself, he's a one-man band, baby. That is Heath Slater at the Wrestling Guy store. And there you see, remind you, ladies and gentlemen, for all of our SoCal you know, fans in SoCal around the area, make sure you go to the Wrestling Guy store and purchase all your pro wrestling merchandise at the store. You saw the great events that we did. Uh, recently with the Andrade event was a phenomenal epic event we enjoyed it very much of hosting it yes very we enjoyed it very much and we had another one coming don't tune in for that we still got of course Mike's hero because he was originally the American hero and that is of course Kurt Angle we will be host guest hosting that one as well coming up so stay tuned for that on the Chanel as well that we're going to be hosting that and we're looking forward and Man, how did Phil rocking out with uh, with you know with three MB? Well, obviously the, the originator himself, he's Slater. How did that feel? And then also let the people <laughs> know that there was a little reunion as well there that people are not familiar with. Yes, so I was there in person, obviously, right? Um, and there was a, re a Nexus reunion. Yes, um, Darren Young and PJ Black. They, they were both there. They showed up, surprising Keith Slater. And it was a great moment, a great moment to see, you know, that these guys are legit friends, you know, and they were happy to see each other. And it was great. It was a good time. Um, my audition to 3MB was not uh, the best, <laughs> you know. I was uh, off key for a little bit there. Uh, but all in all, it was a, it was a fun time for sure. Definitely. So there you have it. Make sure the description is right below on the comments. I mean, right below, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. Click on the wrestlingguysstore.com for the upcoming events or if you want to purchase anything from their store. Let them know. Even if you go to the store, let them know that Circle Debate, tell me I watch Circle Debate. They'll give you 10, 10, 10% 10 off on your merchandise. And they have a lot of coming. They have a launch of Blaze coming up. They also have. Uh, Kelly, Kelly, Kelly and Layla together. So there are a lot of upcomings in Kurt Angle as well and more to come. So we'll be there as much as possible. You know, because also, you know, Money Bank has another surprise for you guys coming up. But I'm not going to spoil it. Keep an eye on the YouTube channel and also keep an eye on the Mike show as well. So keep an eye on that. All right. Let's tune into NXT. Uh, NXT now with the opening match, Karrion Cross, Austin, Austin Theory. To this day, Money Mike, I'm gonna tell you, like, I still feel those shivers when I when I just see that entrance from Karrion Cross, you just fall and pray. This is him going like that. Oh my God, he's come kind of chills. That theme song to this day still fucking hits me. Yes, Karrion Cross win a match, slobber knocker it was. I mean, it wasn't a like it was, it was a slobber knocker to, to loss in theory. Then we see, um, then we see the way attacking Karrion. Finn Balor makes kind of the save, and Karrion. I mean, I mean, Finn Balor obviously, you know, challenging Karrion Cross. I guess we're gonna see this uh, in two weeks, I believe so. Uh, so this is pretty much the go home away for AEW as well, like kind of the same time. Uh, so, Money Mike, your thoughts on Finn Balor getting the rematch, Karrion Cross, right away? I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. You know, I. Ultimately, what I would like to see is Finn Balor back in the main roster. Um, you know, I feel like he's he's elevated Karrion Cross even more with uh, with the title match that they had, and and if he beats him, if he beats Finn Balor two and zero, uh, I think that would be I think that would be great. Karrion Cross is is on the rise and. Just with his entrance alone, you know, like just just you remembering that and getting the chills, that says a lot, right? So just imagine seeing that at WrestleMania, man. Oof. You know, the, the the things they could do. 
Um, but at this point, he's in NXT, and his stock is rising, you know? No, he, nothing but up for, for, for Carrion. Uh, so I would like to see this match. I'm down with it. Uh, I would like Carrion to win, and then Finn Balor goes back to SmackDown. So. Oh, there you go. There you have it. <laughs> Smack it down. Not, not raw. All right. And then, this, uh, then this one, I was, I don't know how you felt about it, but this other upcoming match that I'm going to speak about, of course, MSK versus Brazango. Man, what the, what's up with that? We see the ref getting involved, getting, you know, ducking down, taking the splits and team, you know, dodging and dodging. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm right here. I'm um, like, <laughs> MSK taking up the, the win. But I'm going to ask you two. Two questions. The first one, your thoughts about that, a match or yourself. And the other one is, do you feel right now that MSK is trying is putting the weight on their shoulders of taking the tag team division in NXT to a different level? This match did not disappoint, to be honest. But I haven't heard your thoughts, so that's what I'm asking these two questions with that. So how do you feel about that? With the, the match itself, with the referee, and then and obviously with that weight on their shoulders of MSK taking the division to another level. Yeah, um, I feel MSK uh, has not disappointed since arriving to the main roster. You know, MSK has been on it, man, and Trips, Triple H, he, he knew it. So that's why he let them win, you know, the tag titles so early on. It, it, it was it's something like this is pretty unheard of, right? So, yeah, I... MSK, have, I've been impressed every each and every time. I, and I've said this before, uh, that I've been impressed each and every time that I've seen them. And, and this was no different, for sure. Uh, as far as the match and the whole ref thing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, what can I say? You know, it was fun, you know. And, and then, you know, I, I like it when, when refs get a little bit more in there. So, yeah, it's cool. Kind of reminds me of the Earl Hebner days, right? The yes. shoving, like, hey, you're like, oh. Get away from it. <laughs> I love yes. it. Right? Good but stuff. I love I oh yes, it's good shit. Good shit. I love it. I, I I me too. I enjoyed it myself. I couldn't say no to it, man. But I'm I'm with you that MSK is gonna take this division. I'm trying to re, re rebuild it of where it's supposed to be at. No no disrespect to the pre previous champions that held it before. Uh it's just that when they got moved up to the main roster, like we could say like the authors of pain, we could say them, or we could say who, what other tag team that was moving up very quick. Uh, I guess you could say the Street Profits. You could say, um, or even the revival. The revival, yes, exactly. Even or even uh, American Alpha too. Like you know when it was you know Game One Jordan, it was just too soon for them to move up, and for what you know, which I don't want to. think. We'll get into that. That's after. Well, that's going to be the end of that story. Yes. But yes, I'm definitely looking forward to see what's going to happen, you know, more upcoming feuds. And I'm glad that this is happening, you know, with the tag team division of NXT and hopefully it builds up more. And we did get to see, uh, not much to talk about here. I mean, Pete Dunn, Leon Ruff. Uh, I mean, Leon Ruff mad at William because he, he didn't fight because he got his ass whooped last the week before. Not much to talk about. Pete Dunn keeps swat, mad, mad, mad that I'm the best. <laughs> I'm, I don't. I mean, I don't know how you felt about that match. It was very quick. I hate. I feel bad for Leon Ruff, man. He's getting squashed too much. I don't know. I mean, in some ways, in a lot of ways, actually, NXT is the better brand of the three. I've said it. Yes. I, uh, in my humble opinion, um, NXT is the best brand uh, of the three, and. Then I don't know. There's segments like this that are kind of forgettable, and it you know I don't know. I guess it it, it reminded me of kind of like a raw segment to be honest. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. with you on that. I'm with you on that. I mean, there's nothing much to talk about there. Then we have the Raquel versus Mercedes Martinez for the NXT Women's Champion. I could say well, it was a great. Match, there was little botches, but I like it though. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. I mean, it was two hard hitting women, very tall. Uh, you know, Raquel with the upset, they like it. I, I'm expecting this to be a trilogy. In my, I, I hate to say that, but I'm expecting it to be a trilogy just because right now, 
who is their next to push? I was just Raquel? About to say that. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I mean, do you agree with that? I mean, I don't know. You unless you have someone in mind who could be next in line for her title besides Mercedes. You know what? I wouldn't mind seeing Ember Moon challenge her. You know, uh, now that she's not tag team champion anymore, mm -hmm. you know, um, let's see, let's see that matchup. I wouldn't mind. Um, as far as the whole Mercedes, Mercedes Martinez thing. Um, yeah, uh, at, at this point, I don't mind it. I wouldn't mind it being a trilogy. Um, Raquel is, you know, barely starting her title run. You know, I a feel like this to kind of past the time i guess you could say yeah uh is is good it, it, it you know mercedes is well capable of putting over uh raquel for sure you know who i do want to see though like the later on like how i'm with you on that but yeah who i do want to see later i want to see Josiah lee i think it's about her damn mm. time oh yeah oh, I forgot about her. yeah because now that she has you know i forgot her name the her boss whatever you know whoever it is it's <laughs> I think she's she's like that tough heel. Why not have that against her? Let's say they later on they can use it for a takeover. Have her beat the living shit out of Dakota Kai and her try to get her revenge on her, and then that could be a feud later on. That'd be something potential to see versus you know Zaya to get her shot at the title for the first time. You know why not? I mean throughout the, you know later on, that's something new. Why yeah, not? Yeah, why not? Absolutely, we need we need freshness. That's right. We need some fresh, fresh, fresh new faces. And then speaking of fresh new faces, this one came in mind. Uh, Isaiah Swerve, Isaiah Swerve Scott introduces his faction, his new head faction, which it involves, of course, the top Dala, and of course, it involves Ashante Diadonis, and of course, the Mrs. B Fab. Now they're all known as Hit Bro. I, I don't know what was your thoughts about that segment, but I'm going to tell you right now, I actually like this. And I'm kind of glad. I've been saying it for quite some time in the archives, ladies and gentlemen. I've been saying it for quite some time that the, Shane Strickland, who is known now as Isaiah from Scott, yeah. he needed this level, next level consciousness of a push. He needed he to have it. Some, uh, something different because I was tired of seeing him not being pushed up there, but now with this fashion, I'm very intrigued, and I actually, I'm loving this stable. I cannot wait to see. I mean, we know, okay, to give you the description, I know, I know one of these, so I mean, T, I mean, top dollar is obviously AJ from the treasure for, you know, the one for, and, and on A&E, you know, hunting the treasures downs for all the, you know, memorabilia for WWE, and, uh, the other two are not familiar at all either, but I'm I'm gonna do my research and find out who really who they are. And I apologize, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, who are watching or listening, not really familiar with them. But I like this group. Something gives me that vibe that they're gonna do something very great with this. So I don't know how you feel about this new faction hit bro, Money Mike. Yeah, I like it. It, it again, the word fresh comes to mind. You know, it it feels fresh. It feels new like we haven't really seen a group like this you know in a while you know um i do think that isaiah isaiah swerve scott was kind of put aside for a while right yeah you know and and, and here we go it, it it feels like this is it clicks it feels good right now there's sometimes there <coughs> retribution uh, <laughs> um, that don't it, it right from the get go. It feels like they're you know it's like meh you know, but this it feels good so far. So hopefully they're able to take these guys and really run with it because you know the talent in there sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking forward. And I, I, what's what's up with this? I mean, I mean, if, are we gonna see? <laughs> You know, are we going to see a Ted DiBiase managing Cameron Grimes with the Cameron Grimes? Because we did see uh, the segment where Cameron was trying to buy a house for two million. And of course, Ted DiBiase was like twenty million. Uh, and, oh, everybody has a price. <laughs> so I'm like, oh man, this segments are keep going on first with the club, first with the watch, and now with the mansion. 
are we going to see Ted DiBiase managing Cameron? Is going to teach him the way of how to be a, a million dollar man? I mean, what do we? What are we seeing here? What is these uh, upcoming of these appearances of, of Ted DiBiase? You tell me, Money Mike. Is that the direction they're heading with, or what do you feel about that? Yes, um, I froze for a little bit, but I'm back actually. Glacier. Glacier, yes. Um, you know what? Anytime you see the million dollar man, it's a good time, you know, because everybody has a price for the million dollar man. Um, classic, absolutely. And, you know, I, I enjoy seeing these segments. Uh, I think they're funny. I think they're, it's, it's fun to, to see this. Um, manage Cameron Grimes. Cameron Grimes. Um, <laughs> I don't think, I honestly, I don't think that's going to happen. I know that Teddy Biasi has uh, has his church going on. Uh, he's a full time pastor, so I, I really wouldn't think that. I wouldn't mind, but I don't think that he would actually do it full time mm. to be managing. Um, so there's that, but it, you know, the, these uh, segments are are fun to watch for sure. Definitely. And then uh, another one that we that we saw the return. Of course, Bobby Fish after Kyle O'Reilly defeating Only Lor you know, Only Lorkin after they peaked on an Orny uh, jumped Kyle O'Reilly. We see Bobby Fish. Of course, we did see that. Oh, I'm doing my own thing, bro. Like, okay, yeah, but I'll see. You know, I just got something to pick with them, but I'll see you down the road. Where do you see this going? Do you feel that Bobby Fish might turn on Kyle O'Reilly? Do we see another feud coming up? Do we see Fish Riley soon? At this point, for Kyle, I think this would be a good fit. It could be a good fit. Uh, now that he's, I wouldn't say he's in the title picture anymore, you know? So, yeah. Okay. I'll accept it. I'll approve it. Go ahead, WWE. Make it happen. Paul Levesque, you heard it here first. Make that yeah. another rematch, another New Japan, or another... A Ring of Honor match, Bobby Fish versus Kyle O'Reilly. We can see that. I mean, we we're gonna see the Red Dragon, maybe to go back reunited. That was that's what they were, their tag team was called in New Japan, and so mm. I would like to see that. But I guess not. I guess we may, may see a Bobby Fish turn heel on this one in our next feud with another undisputed member. So I mean, there you go. Now the main event of the evening for NXT. We did see the two out of three falls. Sakushita retaining the NXT. Cruiserweight title, which I want to give kudos to both of these individuals because they yeah. made, they main evented, main evented, uh, you know, this past week. Got to give it to them, man. You got a Rasa, and then of course you got a, you know, Japanese Asian, you know, great job from both on both sides. I like it. Very different, very unique. We did see the first fall. Uh, Escobar won the first fall. Kush I, actually, Kushida won the second one, and then Kushida. And last, you know, Escobar the first one, Kushida the second. And then Kushida the third. So great match overall. No interference because of MSK getting involved and uh, causing the legal the, the fantasma to be as you know ejected out of the out of the match. What were your thoughts about this main event? Were you were you impressed on both sides parties on the performance? Yes, absolutely. A fun match to watch. Um it's interesting, you know, a year ago, if you would have told me that the cruiserweight championship was going to be the headlining main event. Uh, you know, I probably wouldn't have believed you, you know, I thought, Oh, it's just on two Oh five live. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I do believe that Escobar elevated the title and you need, you need to, it takes two to tango as they say, right? Indeed. Kushida, Kushida is, has been on a roll right now. And, and, and in this match, it evidenced it all over, you know, uh, both guys, really. So you have Kushida, you have, uh, and you have Escobar, uh, two guys that I'm pretty sure have a lot to prove. And they proved that they were able to handle this main event. And I was entertained all, on, on all, all accounts. So, yeah, definitely. You know, did, did you expect that finisher though from Kushida? Uh, no, but I'm kind of glad it happened. Right, I I, I'm I'm hoping to keep doing these type of like endings. Yeah, it will make 
because it, it gets more of us intrigued as fans. I'm pretty sure who are our, our viewers and our auto platforms maybe agree. If not, comment below. Let us know if you disagree or not. I would like these type of surprises finish because the more the merrier. Because I'm like, oh, because I'm glad you're not making it predictable. Right. Like, they're not doing that because there was so much predictable shit. You know, I'm not counting AEW either because AEW has a lot of prediction too. Um, and so not here to bash on WWE, ladies and gentlemen, or NXT. <laughs> also, AEW has their falls too. They have they have their fails. But yes, if these type of unexpected wins keeps occurring, you're going to give me more uh, us intrigued and more fans intrigued because that's what I'd like to see. Expect that's the what, unexpected. That's why I think WWE will be in good hands when Triple H takes over because of things like these. You know, him and his team have put together a great brand in NXT. Absolutely. A great 100%. Uh, so now I'm speaking of WWE. Yes, by demand, we're giving it to you guys through our audio platform listeners and our viewers, subscribers. The ending of the night topic here to see this day, ladies and gentlemen, for everyone on the East Coast side or around the world, where you're listening or watching. We're going to go ahead and discuss the WWE WrestleMania Backlash. It's supposed to be Backlash, not WrestleMania Backlash. Who the, who the fuck called it that shit? Okay, I, let me just... Let me just... <laughs> digress, Mike. Wh- I'm, I digress. You got it, buddy, Mike. God. No. Bad ideas. Just bad ideas. You know what the real WrestleMania Backlash is? The night after WrestleMania. That's the real WrestleMania backlash. You're not going to just wait an entire month, over a month, to have WrestleMania backlash? No, no. Oh, my gosh. Just, I, I, I wish I knew who came up with this horrendous idea to name that pay-per-view that, you know? Your um, best friend. Oh, my buddy, Bruce. I love you. Oh no! I, I, you know I don't. I don't wish. I don't wish harm on anybody. But whoever came up with that idea, I hope they step on a pile of dog poo because that's how this idea was. It was it just horrendous. Why would you call it that? <laughs> oh man, I'm with you on that. It makes no sense because I'll I'll, I'll let you break it down. But it's like, I, why would you call a resume a backlash? Mike said it correct and right. She'll be a day after. So I want you to go ahead and give very briefly, tell them what the meaning of backlash is, the definition of backlash. So backlash is, you know, the, the turnaround, what happens after, you know, if you throw some, if you throw something that's swinging and it comes back, that's the backlash right there. You know, it, it, it's right away. It's immediate cause and effect, you know, so, yeah, the, the, the WrestleMania backlash, if you are forced to call it that, is the night after WrestleMania. That's your WrestleMania backlash. So, Not so, a month later. There you go. It should be backlash, not WrestleMania backlash. Backlash is, okay, a month later, I'm going to get come back to your ass. I'm going to get your ass. That's <laughs> what it should be. That's what it definitely should be. But, all right, let's go down the card. So, we do have... We got be we have Damian Priest and Miz in a lumberjack match. We do have Ziggler and Rude defending the SmackDown tag titles versus the Mysterio family. We also have the SmackDown Women's Champion being defended, Bianca Bella versus Bailey. We do have the Raw Women's Championship in a triple threat match. Rhea Ripley defended against Charlotte and Oscar. You do have, of course, your you know your WWE championship, which is Lashley defending it, the Almighty Champion versus uh, Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman, and the main event, of course, is you have the Universal Champion, the head of the table, the Chief Tribal Chief himself, Roman Reigns defending it against Cesaro. What are you looking forward to this, McCarr? To all you audio and the listeners, I wish you could see my face at this <laughs> very moment. Um, 
Look, I get it. You know, it, it, I guess it's time for our, our weekly WWE bashing. Um, but, okay. Here we go. The, the positive thoughts here, right? Positive thoughts. Um, what match am I looking forward to? If I were to say, I would say the Bobby Lashley um, match. Because I, uh, I, no offense, Cesaro, but Cesaro is not going to win. Cesaro is not going to take that that title from Roman Reigns. So pretty, pretty predictable. I'm willing to bet five bucks on that. Okay. Um, so yeah, Almighty Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. I feel like Braun Strowman was added to that match to take the fall. I feel that uh, Braun Strowman has kind of been, you know just brought down by booking ever since ever since losing the universal title um but anywho yeah if i were to pick any of those matches it would be that one okay um oh if i had to pick one i'll say because i want them if it does happen i'll be happy in a way i hope they kind of steal the show and that's going to be Ray and Dominic winning the tag titles of Father and Son, beating Ziggler and Rude. And I hope they put a good match. I hope they do. I'm going to be straight honest, ladies and gentlemen, and Mike's going to be honest too. We're not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. I was going to watch the highlights right after, but I'm not going to sit there on Sunday afternoon watching an hour and a half or maybe two hours of... Isn't it three hours? Well, remember nowadays, since there's no crowd, they cut it down. It's only six oh. matches. So, you know, they cut it down. They're not going to go more than, you know, two hours, maybe the 2.30 the most. I don't feel like they go more than – they would not put a three-hour show for this. Do you think it deserves that? I don't think so. Um, I don't know where – I'm with you with the Zara thing. Look, I will be in shock right now, and we're saying it right now. If Zara wins, I will be in shock. I will go back and watch it. I want to be like, "What the f just happened that I just missed?" But I will. I will buy a yearly subscription to Peacock just if Cesaro wins. I'll say that right now. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Money Mike will put his money on the line to subscribe. For fifteen ninety nine to the peacock, and to get the wait, whoa, what the hell? I thought it was nine ninety nine. It was for the first three months, bro. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> really, NBC? Hey, yeah, they're not cheap. They're they're, they're not, you know. I, they, you know. Uh, at least they'll get the office. Screw and you it. get third, you know, third rock in the sun. That was last year, not a bad show. Either. And Parks and Rec. Yeah, uh, there you go. <laughs> But you heard it here first. If Cesaro wins, then he will definitely purchase Peacock. And he'll put it next week live on sharing. He'll, he won't put his card information. He will not do that. He'll just hit purchase, and he'll, we'll see it live if that happens. Yes. If WWE pulls this shit off, bro, I'm going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I say, I'll also say this, that if they do that, then I will take it back, all of it, and yes, WrestleMania backlash, because they would have given Cesaro a WrestleMania quote unquote moment. Oh my God, yeah! Now they're giving him the quote unquote backlash of it. Here you go, buddy. You deserve to get your win. I'm like, what? I guess. <laughs> Another thing that also you know how you brought up about that. You know, the Lashley and Drew and Strowman. That Strowman's going to take the, the fall for either one of them. I uh, think so. Yeah. And Batista actually tweeted out the same about the Raw Women's. Oh, yes. I heard about that. Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. really? You're burying my, my, my buddy Oscar. She's going to take the fall because you're protecting both of your superstars. And I mean, by the way, how it looks, it looks like it. I, I, I'm a big Oscar fan. And it's just an unfortunate to see her in this direction. I, nobody likes to see that. 
Uh, um, at least I'm glad she's still in a title contention picture, but this is not the way to do that to her. And it's an unfortunate. It's I'm not, I'm not hating on Charlotte. I'm not hating. It's just the story itself. It's just like, Jesus, find some. <sighs> Man, that's what that, this is why we stopped talking about WWE because we digress so much of their downfalls of what they had done. The actual potential matches that you were able to the capability to do, but you let go a lot of these future upcoming stars that you released for no reason because of your budget, because you already got enough money, but you're greedy, want you know, let go more. And yeah, I'm not gonna get into those details, but this story itself, I feel bad, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, Mike. I can't I I we can't be no longer a WWE fans anymore, man. I can't. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's it's hard to to get back into that, you know. Um, I I am not making this up. Earlier today, I went on YouTube and I saw a video that said um, results for WrestleMania backlash, and. I honestly believe that WrestleMania backlash had already happened and I did not <laughs> care that I didn't see it. I was like, oh, it came out. Oh, okay, well, good for them. Uh, but it, as it turned out, it's this Sunday coming up. So um, that's how much I, in, I've i lost interest on on the product. It is an unfortunate, ladies and gentlemen, and to our audience subscribers as well. I know you guys were intrigued of hearing us out, but, you know, NXT is no matter, they ain't going nowhere. NXT, we always speak highly upon off because that's our other favorite show to see in the product of WWE because how Mike said it earlier, he said it, that that's the number one brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it is the number one brand. Like it or not, it is. The number two in, one is in NXT. WWE. In WWE and the NXT UK is another one. So those are the only two brands. Which, you know what? We should look into that more too, Mike. Says we got to cover more NXT UK. Since we're not covering NXT, uh, covering WWE, why not cover NXT UK? What do you think about that? Bloody hell. Yes. <laughs> of course. Why not? I know, because there's so much to cover here, ladies and gentlemen. But there you have it. We are done for this day, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate you guys for tuning in our two-part episode of Ep Circle of Debate 50, episode 54. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And also, we want to give everybody our audio platform listeners around the world. Of course, India. We're praying for you guys to get better on the pandemic. Once again, thank you so much for being uh, loyal you know, subscribers and listeners as well on our audio platforms. Thank you. And we're praying for you guys to get better. I know it's getting worse out there for you guys. And also wanted to say to my Raza as well. Uh, another thing I want to say as well for Colombia. Uh, another thing that it's been, it's, I, and we're not a political podcast here. But just, just we're digressing as expressions of, of freedom and, you know, you know, obviously all over the world and people that, you know, are, it's, that we care about, you know, all people, everyone. And it's an unfortunate things that are happening in these current events. Like I said, we're not the news, we're not politics, it's just we're giving our concerns and well being to everyone out there. Be careful, con cuidado. La gente también de Colombia que mira esto, a uh, todo nacional de la, de la raza hispana, con cuidado, por favor, cuídense. Ya sé que estamos en un, un evento de que, afortunadamente, no tenemos control. Podemos tener control, pero eso es otra cosa de que aquí en, en, este, en, en este canal no somos un canal de que hablamos de política. Porque eso, eh, y lo digo con todo respeto a ustedes, no es nada contra ustedes, sino que no somos bien políticas aquí en esto. Si gustarían escucharnos hablar de eso, comentan abajo y hacemos otra parte y damos nuestra opinión en respecto de cosas políticas que están pasando en el mundo. Sí, claro. Y tranquilo. Tra tranquilo, tranquilo. There you go. So, basically what I said is, gentlemen, it's like I said, if you guys want to hear us talk about politics, comment below. We could do that separately. Just that's something that we don't really touch bases. That's out of our subject, out of our team. We do have our opinions and minds, but we keep that 
very disclosure because then we don't want to bring that type of vibe at all. And I mean that with respect. But if you would like to hear our opinions, comment below, reach out to us. And we will definitely have a sit down and talk to you about politics. Is that right, Money Mike? Of course. And I would like to definitely nominate Ivan C for president. Ivan C, president 2022. There you go. Oh, man, no, I was supposed to be Money Mike, man. You were an American hero. <laughs> You're supposed to be the president, man. 2022 is supposed to be you, along uh, with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There you go. That's we got. Ah. ah, there you go. And also, once again, thank everyone from all our social media platforms, the UK, Switzerland, Germany, Spreken de Deutsch. Ah, I, sehr I, gut. I, mm -hmm. Ich fine. liebe, ich liebe alles Deutschland. Uh, es ist sehr gut und uh, ich möchte Kaffee mit Zucker bitte. Tschüss. Ah, ja, gut. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, I don't really understand what he said, but if you guys are, you know, our German audio platform listeners that are listening, I'm pretty sure he meant very well to thank you for tuning in. I'm pretty of sure course. that's what he said. <laughs> and also, don't forget to subscribe right at the end of this video. Hit that link button right at the end. Subscribe, hit that like, hit the notification bell. And as we get our weekly shows, we had a lot of content this past week. We had, we had, you know, exclusive interviews. We had, you know, the, the delicious Van Vicious, the best of the best Austin Lane. We had our UFC MMA episode. We also gonna have our ma match of the week coming out later on this, you know, in the afternoon. We couldn't do it because Matt Callis was too busy because, oh, you know, by God, I'm creating next level consciousness, you know, work. So that's what he's been doing. So I, mean, I guess <laughs> I don't know. But yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, once again, don't forget to tune in our this Sunday as well, our top five picks of the week, which is the worst and best GMs. So keep an eye on that this Sunday coming up. We got a lot more coming next week. Keep an eye, make sure on our social media and also not forget i apologize one more thing do not forget we still have that raffle going for all the pro wrestling man pro wrestling fans all over the east coast especially around the, the jersey area brooklyn area new york area you guys want to go to this uh, epic event that is coming up next saturday may 22nd make sure you go the global syndicate wrestling catalyst they have a phenomenal card they're gonna have to have the first round tournaments for the crowning the first ever GSW Women's Champion. Of course, you have the main event. You have you have uh, Alex Hammerstone defending the GSW World Heavyweight title versus the Bone Dirty Daddy Chris Dickinson, Jacob Vatu versus Mike Elgin. You have Super Nitro, let's go with G with Gio Gabano versus Austin Aries and Ricky Reyes and much more matches announced. So make sure, don't go, you know, make sure you tune into that. And if you can attend live, See it on Fight TV. Order it is right there on Fight TV for fifty. You know, twenty dollars will not hurt you to go ahead and purchase that on Fight TV on May twenty second. So once again, thank you very much, everyone, to tuning in. This is the host of TV is what I've been seeing, and of course, the CEO that brings the pain and the hurt business here in Circle Debate, because he brings that business, that hurt business here, because he is the master disaster, because the king of Sting, and because he has the man with the plan. That's why he's. Money, Mike Lopez, with a three M's right there. He has zero fear. Yeah, no. Send it to you guys. Goodbye, good day, and we'll see you guys on Sunday. Well, well. All bullshit aside, I've been stuck in this desert for a long time. If you don't know, you gotta watch the old video from Circle of Debate. Besides that, I just wanna go ahead and congratulate the team of Circle of Debate for doing a good job. Keeping up, being true to the love of wrestling. Wanna go ahead and thank Money Mike for stranding me out here in this desert. Director Chris Kennedy for abandoning me here a long time ago.
Mokal! Mac Callus. Where's the water you told me you're gonna drop by? And of course, the devious one. Who gave me this phone that don't work. Besides that, keep it up. Keep it 100. And I'll be seeing you guys for sure. Yo, dude, I'm back in town, dude. Dude, I don't know how I made it. My boat broke and shit. Look, I'm in Venice Beach, man. That's right, man. In and out, cocaine. What? I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to call you. Man, I see you! Eh. The fuck? Where the fuck's my boat? 